checking out this video, don't forget, like and subscribe. Let's talk about some actual news. Samantha Irvin is gone. Her time has come to an end as a Raw ring announcer. Thank you to every WWE fan who accepted me. She thanks the locker room, the crew, and the cameramen, WWE superstars past and present. She doesn't thank the ones from the future, though. Thanks, Paul Heyman, Road Dog, Triple H, Mark Henry. To the fans, my entire career I've been waiting for you. You were meant to be, and I can prove it. Stay tuned. All my love, Samantha. My presumption is that she's heading to AW. I don't know that for sure, but uh, that is my that's my presumption. Go and uh, and do work there with Ricochet. So my my presumption is she's going to take some time off, maybe dabble and try to get some outside gigs going for herself, or do some interesting things that she wants to do, and and possibly even. Maybe settle down with Ricochet and, and have some kids. If we're just spitballing where she could possibly go and what she could possibly do, why not that one? That's your prediction? All right, sure, well. Sure, why not? Well, and then she'll end up in AEW. All right. I will say AEW sooner rather than later. I don't even know if she's on Raw tonight, to be honest. Like, is this it? I don't know. I don't, and, and apparently it is. Let's see. Well, yeah, I guess I guess um I'm gonna try and find out actually if she's there tonight. I'll ask. But they they uh I don't think WWE was expecting this. And so they gotta uh they gotta get her going. So if you're if you're uh if you're a, a ring announcer, now's your chance. Well, I think they got enough of those uh fellas and ladies, do they not? No. Uh Mike uh <laughs> They don't have Rome? one right now. Mike Rome. He's already on the show. They need somebody for Raw. They need a Raw ring announcer. Well. And they need a good one because she was good. She was good. So She was very good. Maybe Lillian will do it tonight. She just signed that Legends deal. <laughs> so that's a possibility. But, like, yeah. they, they got to get this going. Can we bring Tony Chimmel back? Doubtful. I like Chimmel. I suppose you never know. WWE also bringing NXT to the former ECW arena for the first time ever. It's booked for Wednesday, November 6th. You know what that means? Well, I can tell you exactly what that means. They are not running head-to-head -head with the election. They're moving Smart. from Tuesday to Wednesday that week, <laughs> which means that's going to be your next uh, your next AEW versus NXT head-to-head -head battle. This time it will be on AEW's day. Uh, NXT will be from the ECW arena. 2300 I'm sure arena. They're going to book everything they can for that show, and uh, it'll be on the CW. And if you if you look at the numbers, I mean, CW is back to doing pretty much what uh, they were doing in USA. So, I guess we'll see going forward. Can I get just one moment, please, of Steve Carino on WWE programming? Can I get one moment of Steve Carino? While they're the ECW on arena, NXT, please give I me that. I would not be the least bit surprised if they do some sort of ECW. But well, you know, the one thing they can't do is have Paul Heyman there. They're not no. going to waste Paul Heyman's return no. for this ECW arena show on a Wednesday night. No. But you could have, you know, the Sandman. He could no. be there. Tommy Dreamer. Uh, I guess they're working with... with uh, NXT. No, we're working I mean, with TNA. I uh, mean, TNA, yeah. Thank you, Mike. Same thing. He could be there. <laughs> Joe Hendry. RVD. Yeah, well. He could be on the show. Well, how does that work? Because he's got that wacky Legends contract. He can do some things, but not other things. This person suggests RVD and Javon Evans. As long as Javon wins. I'll I mean, take that. I mean, I'd be I'll fine with it. I'll take RVD winning. Who cares? Blue Come Meanie on. suggested. That's... Yeah, he could be there. <laughs> Kimono Wanalea. Francine. I have no uh, idea where Kimono Wanalea is these days. But we know Francine's around. She was yeah. on the show a while ago. She was great. We should get her back. Yes, in she fact. was. No, the zombie can't be there. He passed away. But he was a nice guy. Is Shane Douglas still the on the uh, eighty-six list? I would. I would suspect he probably won't be there. Yeah. Uh, Amish. Be Amish Roadkill and Danny Doring. All right. Uh, <laughs> Don Cat. Oh wait, no, he won't. We had Said. six former WWE writers coming forward to accuse Vince McMahon of creating a hostile and sexist work environment. This was in Rolling Stone. There's really not a lot to say about this because 
this Rolling Stone article was like, it was exactly, I shouldn't say exactly, it was very similar to the Vince McMahon Netflix documentary in the sense that if you listen to this show, if you subscribe to The Observer, I don't think that you read it and there was anything that surprised you. It was basically a confirmation of everything that we've talked about for a long time. And I actually have, you know, friends that, uh, I mean, they know what I do, but they don't watch any wrestling whatsoever. But they watch the McMahon documentary. And, like, for an average person that doesn't follow wrestling, like, they went, oh, my God, what the heck? Like, yeah, yep. But for someone who knows, you know, this kind of stuff, it's like there, there's no new information there. But, I mean, there was one thing that I thought was interesting. And, uh, and this will get everybody angry at me. But, you know, if you listen... You don't need to get mad, okay? Vince is a horrible person. He is a creep. He should not come back to WWE. He's, I mean, okay? Can we at least get that out of the way first? All right. So do you remember when all of this happened and everybody was, you know, can't, it, it's, you know, how could anyone in WWE not know that this happened? Remember that one? How could anybody mm -hmm. not know? Yes. Well, Here's an article. They interviewed six former writers, all of which do not like Vince McMahon at all. They have nothing but negative things to say about Vince McMahon. And all of them said they had no direct knowledge or any information about what happened with Janelle Grant. Nobody knew. Now, listen, am I saying that nobody in WWE knew? Of course not. You know, there were people that knew. There are people that knew that are that are no longer there, and who knows? There might be and some people there that knew that are still there. And if there are, let me make this clear. Good. If there are, they should be gone, okay? Yes. But this idea that everybody knew, like everybody is responsible. It's a terrible company. Everybody who works there. The thing with a guy like Vince is they try to cover their tracks, and often they do a good job of it. And I know that everybody read the thing and they were like, oh, you know, Vince was texting pictures to production people and bragging and blah, blah, blah. I still, I don't, I don't know if I buy that because it doesn't make any sense. If you look at everything else around this, it's like, it just doesn't make any sense. I think a lot of the things that Vince texted were like his fantasies or whatever. And people bring up, hey, Nick Khan, Triple H, I don't know. Maybe they knew. If they knew, they should be gone. But so far, we don't have any proof that they knew. And as you move further down the ladder, like, there's plenty of people that had no idea about any of this. So here we are, six writers. None of them knew anything. And they're all people that very much dislike Vince. So if they did know, they'd have said something. And they still said they had no knowledge of it. Thank you for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notify button, and you'll never miss a video again.